Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. A very important thing as we do on almost all instruments, but probably way, way more important on the piano is scale practice. Because every scale has 12 keys, if you think about it. So if you take a major scale and if you say, I want to practice the major scale, well, to truly practice it, you need to do whatever your practice is. It could be a lick. It could be just the scale going up and down, you know, in both hands, ascending, descending or whatever. Or it could be some kind of a pattern. But if ever you do it on C major, G major, A or whatever, there's always 12 keys to do for every scale, right? So it could look or it could seem as though this is an this is a mountain to climb because 12 scales is a lot you already put in so much of effort into that first scale and you're sweating it out mentally and physically so to speak so what do you do you know do you give up do you say oh my practice is over or should i bother moving on do i have the energy to even move on well the first thing i'd like to tell you is the journey is not a linear struggle it's it's an exponential, I wouldn't say exponential struggle, but it gets exponentially easier over time. It's all it's a curve like this, basically. It goes like this. It's a law, it's very, very tricky in the beginning stages. It might take you a few days to get it on the first scale, but then you may may do the second scale. You find oh, the second scales become much easier, or the third scale the fourth scale and then wow it took you probably the same amount of time to do uh, the last six scales than it took you to do the first scale or it may take you about 10 percent of that time if you practice trust me this is generally the ecosystem so what i'm going to do in this lesson is just break down scale practice and give you a strategy to hopefully play your scales and do your exercises on all the 12 keys without too much of stress because using a bit of maths you can just integrate a few things make it easy and kind of train your brain to get it done and this is definitely what works for me whenever i practice a lick or a melody or a tune i always recommend you to do whatever it is that is given to you on all 12 keys not just your comfortable scales right so before we get started it'll be awesome if you can consider hitting that subscribe button and there's a bell icon somewhere there hit that for regular notifications let's get cracking so first of all the basic scales in music are major and minor right so let's say you want to start something maybe you start on the scale which you're not so familiar with you know because you have to play with your mind a little bit so i would say let's take a minor so let's start with c minor Observe that and you're doing a little drill. Let's say you're practicing thirds. Or maybe trios of three. This is on C minor, which is the natural minor for now okay you've done your work or you're doing your work on c minor and you want to move forward now something hits you and says how many minor scales are there 12 of them how many major scales are there well 12 more of them that's 24 scales that seems more than a mountain to climb right so you here are a few strategies so the first thing you do is look at C minor. We learn the relative scales. So every major scale is also a natural minor scale in terms of the notes. In terms of the intervals, no. But at least the notes of C minor, the pattern of what you play, would remain the same as its relative major or its cousin major scale. So how do you get the major scale from C minor? You can move up a minor third. So a minor third up C minor would be... E flat. So E flat major and C minor are the, have the same notes. They share the same key signature. So if you practice something on C minor, all you have to do is start the same exercise on E flat major. Let's say you're doing thirds on C minor.
doing it also in the left hand you just start on e flat the notes are pretty much the same so all the challenges you had to take oh for c minor i have to avoid that e i have to avoid the f sharp i have to avoid the b or the a you you've already trained yourself on c minor and you can execute that training on even the e flat major scale which would be its related major so c minor e flat major pretty much the same in fact the fingering especially when you move around will be pretty much the same however if you do the scale fingering the fingering will be different you know or the e flat it would be different because of the linear movement you are encountering white and black notes ir irregularly or differently rather so in some cases you have to alter the fingering but the shapes of the notes are not being altered so you learn c minor you kind of have learned e flat major or if ever you learned e flat major then you have kind of learned c minor isn't it so that's one way to go about this process now the next thing you you'd like to do is are these scales c minor and e flat major are they similar to other scales now if you look at c minor a nice strategy would look would be to look at the circle of fifths c is somewhere in the circle of fifths well it's not somewhere it's at 12 o'clock if you draw it in a clock shape so it's there and you ask yourself what are the neighbors of c the clockwise neighbor of c would be g the counterclockwise neighbor of c would be f so there you have it the similar scales or the most similar scales would be g minor and f minor i'm talking minor because we started our lesson with c minor scale so c minor has these three flats in them right e flat a flat b flat now what is its similar scale its similar scale would be both g minor the clockwise neighbor and f minor the counterclockwise neighbor so if you take g minor it pretty much has the same notes except for the the different note which c minor had so c minor had that a flat while a g minor has an a so you will find that one note which kind of replaces each other so you're doing c minor the g minor and the f minor would be pretty much the same or if i were to convert this to major scale terminology you have e flat major e flat major is very similar to its own neighbors what are e flat major's neighbors b flat which would be the clock neighbor e flat b flat like that and the counter clock neighbor of e flat would be a flat right so what let's compare and contrast these uh, these three scales e flat major three flats b flat major two flats so where is the difference the difference is again in that b flat has a natural while e flat has an a flat and that's printed in the signature key signature b flat only two flats okay and if you take a flat a flat would have an additional flat that's this guy okay d flat so e flat has a d a flat has a d flat so if you're practicing let's say you're practicing something to do with fingering for all you know these might have very similar fingerings so practice on e flat pretty much whatever you do on b flat and a flat would be very similar and if you think about it is just one note different so if i were to practice on e flat major i kind of have also know c minor and the neighbors of e flat major happen to be a flat the counter neighbor and b flat the clock neighbor so i've kind of got those scales also under the belt because they share six out of seven notes in common that's a that that that's going to make it much easier i think 
right? And similarly, your minors get all that more easier. C minor, G minor, and F minor are very similar to each other. So with this system, we've kind of got 6 out of 24 skills done and dusted. Not done and dusted, but at least you know that they are very similar to each other, right? And 6 out of 24 is 25% of the job done. I think that's a job already well done. So you've ended up kind of achieving 6 by knowing one or getting the confidence to kind of get all those six. Now, moving forward, you have to think what or you have to ask yourself, what kind of person are you? Are you the person who wants it to get more and more easier? Or are you the person who wants another Herculean challenge? And then that Herculean challenge gets easier and easier and easier. So this is where you can kind of do polar opposite scales, as I call them. So if you're if you're working on E flat, you ask yourself either one of the two things. What is the tritone of E flat? The tritone of E flat is a perfect fifth minus one. That's A. So A would be the tritone. That is the one you're going to practice now. Now you could either look at polar opposite that way or if you look at the circle of fifths, if you take a diameter from anywhere in the circle which has 12 of our musical notes, you'll get the tritone. And if you've done it on E-flat, then you've capitalized on that knowledge by doing its neighbor skills, namely B-flat and uh, uh, A-flat. You're now going to the domain of A. What, what, it's a polar opposite. So what happens on the piano is A now becomes a sharp scale. So the fingering is going to be turned almost over its head. It'll be very different. So you'll have that same, you'll have to go through that same rigorous grind to practice it on A, you know. A has three sharps, you know, very different texture on the fingers than playing a flat scale like My thumb is always in, a, in and about there. I'm always inside, while A, I'm always outside. So, there we go. So, A major, to our luck or advantage, once we get A, we'll realize A is very similar to its own neighbors. What are the neighbors of A? Well, the counterclockwise neighbor would be, as it's going that way, you'll have D, G, C, right? So, D would be its uh, counter neighbor anti-clock neighbor and you go clockwise you'll get E so E and A and D are these this trio of scales that you have to practice so A major has three sharps F sharp C sharp and G sharp D major would have two sharps namely F sharp and C sharp and it would have a G while A major has a G sharp so the G and G sharp, that difference is there. And similarly, when you compare A major to E major, E major has an extra sharp. That one, that's D sharp. A major has E major, has this D sharp in it. So again, the practice becomes a lot more easier. And again, the relative minors of all this holds good. A major's relative minor, F sharp minor. Because if you go to the F sharp minor, by the way, relative minors are also easy in the circle of fifths. You can just go three o'clock from anywhere. So what are F sharp minor's neighbors? You go a fifth up, that would be C sharp. And you go a fifth down, that would be B. So you take F sharp minor. Very similar to B minor. Very similar to C sharp minor. Right, so we've got how many scales now? Six were done in the earlier scenario. Now again, we've got six. So that's 12. And now as you move forward, it's going to get even more easier because you've practiced the toughest lot. It got easier because it, it went out in the circle of fifths way. It went out the same way in the polar opposite scale. And now you just sort of soldier forward. You have very little to go. You're at that point of the exponential curve, as I told you, where it's getting ridiculously easy. You can almost have fun when you play now. You can start creating some music and you feel like your hands are very, 
they are flowing like butter on the piano and trust me it, it feels like that it's a great feeling and the exercise doesn't have to take you just a couple of hours it can take you a whole week or more you know so take your time with it but practice in this specific way and when all fails whenever you're having a, a doubt okay what is the note how do i find it use what i call as piano worms which kind of shape out these notes pretty well also look at the key signature which tells you specifically whether the scale has sharps or flats what i mean by that is it's very logistically important on the piano to call something sharp or flat i don't know if you know this so if you take f sharp the the reason they call it f sharp is because f sharp defeats or destroys or uh, annihilates f so any sharp scale which has an f sharp will not have an f so if you take d major f sharp f sharp destroys f so that's pretty much why they they've coined the terms sharps and the enharmonic equivalents the flats so when do you call this f sharp as a g flat maybe in the case of a d flat major scale where the flat g flat will replace or remove the white note or the natural note to its right so whenever you call something flat it tends to remove the white note to its right and whenever you call something sharp it tends to remove the white note to its left another example let's take the simple ones g major one sharp f sharp so very clearly there is no f you may think that this is because of alphabet naming well yes but i think music theory happened because of the piano i don't think music theory would have happened because of the violin because the violin was invented much before so was so were the horn instruments the wind instruments the piano needed a lot of mechanical brains and a lot of technology to be created so they made the theory most likely with the piano it was piano and theory coming together notation and so on so if you take g it has f sharp so it doesn't have an f okay and then if you take f major it has a b flat do not ever call that a sharp there's a reason it's called b flat to help you remember take away your b b becomes an illegal note so f major has b flat it does not have a b so these are things which can help you improve your scale practice also be a lot more clear not hit too many mistakes and so on and so forth so we've just used some we've just used the circle of fifths and some simple facts about scales to hopefully make the the curve of learning anything you wish to learn on the 12 keys a lot more easier uh, exponentially easier as i mentioned at the beginning of the video i hope you made some sense and i hope you find some use with this perspective of looking at scale practice right guys thanks a ton for watching the video and if you'd like some scale exercises they are waiting for you in our description if you if you were a bit glitchy on the theory concepts like the circle of fifths we have an entire playlist dedicated to that circle so it's a very important circle check out those lessons as well and a lot more of of these would be on our channel so make sure to hit that subscribe for regular weekly videos hit that bell icon for regular notifications and i will catch you in the next lesson cheers thanks for watching